A loop within a workflow allows that workflow to perform the same task or tasks for multiple items. Loops process items sequentially, applying the same set of actions to each one, or if you use conditions, different actions or sets of actions depending on those conditions. A loop is a step that you can add in your workflow, and the actions inside that loop might then run multiple times depending on the conditions, filters, or limits you set. After you add a loop, you need to select a data source for that loop. When the workflow runs, the loop will automatically iterate through those items, performing the actions you define underneath. Whenever you have an action step that needs to run on a specific table, that step will need to be within a loop. The loop step is where you define which table to perform your operation on. The exception to this is app interaction workflows, where you select a data source at the trigger step. To add more steps within a loop, click here, and to add subsequent steps outside the loop, click here. You can move loops around, dragging them higher or lower in the sequence, or even drag them inside of other loops or conditions. Here's a really simple example. The first step in this workflow is a loop, and we've selected the items table. By selecting this table, we then gain access to its data for conditions and actions that are performed. And if we switch to a different table, this would then break because these actions rely on the data in the original table. So within this loop on the items table, we have a condition that checks if the stock is below 10. If it is, it sets the column values to be restock. And if the stock value is above 10, it just clears the value. Let's see what happens when we run this. We can see that the data has changed in our table. And if we visit the workflow's run history, we can see that the loop ran for nine rows and the condition found five items that had a stock level below 10 and four items with a stock level above 10. When you add a loop, a default limit of 10 rows is set, but you can change this. A limit is just the number of rows a loop will process before stopping. For example, if we run that workflow again, but with a limit of two, the loop will only run on two rows. When you're building and testing workflows, you should definitely add limits to your loops to prevent unwanted runs across many rows of data while you're testing. Once you've confirmed that everything in your workflow is running the way that you want, you can raise this limit and let the loop run across a much larger data set. There are more global limits to the number of rows and steps that a single loop can process, but you can find out more details on this in our documentation. Arranging and nesting conditions and loops together is how you control the flow of actions in your workflows. This can become incredibly complex, but here are a couple of principles to help you start thinking about this. With filters in loops, you can filter out the rows that are processed within that loop, essentially skipping over the items that you know won't be needed. However, sometimes you want your workflow to perform different steps depending on conditions. For example, if the status of the item has been approved, then do this, and if not, send an email requesting approval on it. Using loops inside of loops allows you to systematically go through another table and make changes that then impact the overarching loop. For example, here's a workflow that goes through our active orders and archives them to our master list of orders. We've got three tables set up for managing our orders. We've got all orders, all active orders, and then the individual line items for each active order. Our main loop goes through the active order table first and archives rows from it by adding the row to our master orders table, then deleting the row from our active master list. But an important part of this archiving process is also removing the line items from the active order line items table. So within this broader loop, we can then nest another loop that will then specifically check through that table, archiving the rows by adding them to our broader order lines table. Another key feature of loops is the error handling. If an issue occurs like missing data in a row, Glide ensures that the workflow doesn't stop entirely. Instead, it skips problematic rows and continues processing the rest. So your automation stays reliable even when it's working with imperfect data. As we saw earlier, there's a workflow run history where you can review the data inside of each loop. And this way you can debug and improve your workflow so it doesn't happen next time. To learn more about workflows in general, you can head over to our docs at glideapps.com learn.